Welcome to the Corporate Treasury 101 podcast. I'm Hussam. And I'm Guillaume. In this podcast, we are going through the fundamental concepts of corporate treasury, which I learned from my experience working at a big four consulting company. And he'll explain it in a way that someone like me who knows nothing about the topic can understand. We hope you enjoy the episode. Take us a little bit into the technicalities of that, though. So you have your cash position. Mm -hmm. You said that you get that with a live exchange rate, consolidate them all together into your consolidated position. Yes. Um, But surely that's quite difficult to do. I mean, my bank, for example, if I transfer someone money, it doesn't arrive sometimes for two, three days, Mm -hmm. right? There are some internet companies going around now, these internet banks that are more instant. Mm -hmm. But the typical banks, the ones that corporates would do business with, They tend to be really slow, you know? So how do they manage hundreds of bank accounts mm-hmm. with thousands of clients? Um, how do you keep track of all that Yeah, practically? I love when we dig into technical topics, uh, Usam. So for the thing you said about the delay uh, between your payments and the moment your creditor receives it, the two or three days delay, in it, that's something that's a float uh, that is usually applied to individuals and it's indeed the time of processing the information but also the bank somehow maximizing uh, that transaction. First of all, it happens a little bit less for corporates because, well, their size is much more important, right? So the power, the leverage they have in the bank is much more important. Therefore, they can say, okay, look, you do not take three days to execute my payment. I want my creditor to have it tomorrow, for instance. So it depends on cutoff times, for instance, but we're going to dig into this in future episodes. Anyway, Indeed, you need to take multiple things into account when it comes to cash positioning. So, we're going to stay high level here, but this will definitely open the door for other episodes uh, by bringing up certain key concepts of corporate treasury. So, cash positioning and the how to do it depends, first of all, on the maturity of a company's treasury department, right? It can be very manual still. So, for instance, the treasury department receives the information from the bank on what we call a bank statement. And then they point it out manually in Excel, for instance. So they record, they key in the transactions and the actual balances into an Excel that will then calculate uh, the cash position of the group level. The next level would be to have it at the ERP level. So the enterprise resource planning, such as SAP or Oracle. Again, we're going to tackle what an ERP precisely is and its impact in treasury in future episodes. But what you have to remember is that in this system, Uh, is made the accounting especially. And the accounting section is what can be used to have the cash position as well. But, and that's what, uh, and that's where it becomes interesting, the best in class treasury departments proceed in another way. So, high level, being able to have an accurate cash position requires multiple things. First of all, is a proper communication between your bank and your systems. So you want a proper bank connectivity solution. Um, because of recent events, you might have heard of SWIFT, for instance. SWIFT Mm -hmm. is a network that is used by the bank to communicate between themselves, uh, but they also communicate with the corporates, or at least most of the biggest corporates in this world. It's a Belgian system, originally, actually. Exactly. Originally, it is. So we can be proud of our uh, hosting (laughs) country. Adopted, hosted country. Yes, Yes, exactly. Uh, So SWIFT is a solution. It's not the only one. Quickly, and just for you to have the words in mind already, the host-to-host solution uh, is a way of communicating between a corporate and a bank. There is also the APIs, so this really integrated uh, IT systems that connect the bank and the corporates, but let's not tackle this for the moment. Point is, you need a proper bank connectivity solution. Then you need to receive the bank statements. We just mentioned it. The bank statement is what your bank will send you with the list of operation transactions you had during the day, for instance, and with your closing balance. At the end of the day, here is how much money there is in the bank account. Now, you have the bank statements. You receive them through the bank connectivity solution. You need to treat them, right? You need to consolidate them and treat them in a proper manner. So you need a system. Best-in-class treasury departments have treasury management systems and payment hubs. Again, let's not dig into those concepts, but at least you have the you have the name in mind. Um, and then you need a proper reporting tool. So you receive the bank statement through the bank connectivity solution. It has been treated by your treasury management system. You want it to be displayed in a user-friendly manner. So you want it dynamic in a reporting. 
Is it enough for your understanding, Osam? Is it clear? I, I think that's uh, that's enough to tackle. <laughs> I can I see a very deep system behind it all. Indeed. But uh, it makes a lot of sense. So the basics are that it can go all the way from being manual, really, in an Excel, but the bank statements mm -hmm. are really the key part. Exactly. This can either be integrated in automatically yes. or manually. I assume most corporates are doing everything automatically nowadays mm -hmm. um, through systems, like you said, like ERPs and other connectivity systems. Absolutely. Yeah. It's good to know. Um, so, is that everything on cash positioning? Again? Yeah, I think we've tackled it um, and you've summarized it quite well. Bank statements is indeed one of the most important uh, things to remember here. This is where your bank balance is displayed. So that's the information you want to get. And then you consolidate all of them at group level. Indeed. Makes a lot of sense.